afternoon. This is Hal Nog Steve wishing you a very pleasant afternoon. And um, yes, the days are starting to draw in now and as we move into November. And um, I think I'd like to bring you some uh, hopeful uh, information today. And uh, well, you may not think it's hopeful after we finish the discussion, but uh, one of the really interesting things that is happening here, and, and I believe it's through something that Sigmund Freud discovered, which is um, this little quirk that all humans have called the subconscious desire to confess. And um, so when people have done something wrong, uh, they tend to want to tell other people about it, uh, maybe not in direct ways, but indirect ways. Uh, my father, for example, was a police officer, and um, when he was on the beat, he would say sometimes he, he'd be walking down the street and some guy would just jump into a doorway. And he'd think, well, why, why would a regular person do that? There you go. That's the subconscious desire to confess. And more often than not, when my dad went into uh, the store doorway, uh, the guy said, oh, you got me, Gov. You got me. Well, what for? You tell me what happened. So this is something that we all possess. And it doesn't matter whether we... Well, institutions are all run by individuals, so institutions have the same kind of thing going on as well. And so, for example, with the social media platforms, uh, when you go onto Facebook or Twitter, for example, and you see um, that it has been blocked, it has been fact-checked, uh, it has been, or the person has been removed, uh, you can rest assured that they've told you that those people are probably getting a little too close to the truth. So it's actually telling you what you should be listening to and what you should be avoiding. And also the interesting thing about um, Facebook blocking people, putting you in Facebook jail and so on and so forth, and even you know, YouTube now is removing the dislike counter. And uh, to protect the small creators like myself, well you know what, I love the discount, uh, sorry the dislike counter. Um, that tells me whether my stuff is okay or not. And I think that anyone who has got the nuts to sit here behind a camera and pretend that they have something to say should be called a task um, for that content. Absolutely, that I, I, I completely agree with that. I should be told, I should be told if I'm speaking rubbish here or nonsense, or if you can offer other evidence, please. That's how I think the world works. You know, as a scientific mind, uh, you welcome criticism, you welcome other opinions. Um, pylons in cancel culture, no. But uh, honest criticism, constructive criticism and other opinions, yes, uh, that is in very important to get to the truth. And so, as I say, these platforms are telling you that maybe you should go take a look at that. Maybe you should follow up on that thing that they fact-checked or they blocked because, um, yep, they're not being quite as genuine. And, of course, removing a dislike button doesn't change anything. And if any of you have been on the White House YouTube channel, you will see that it is consistently by the thousands thumbs down. That's what this is all about or companies like Gillette putting out completely woke ads, uh, you know, trashing men, that, you know, the primary consumer of shaving products, uh, you know, uh, and calling them a bunch of abusers. Well, you know, guess what? Uh, uh, you, you, sure, guys are gonna go, I'm not keen on that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the message that is being put forward in that um, because it's the wrong, the wrong approach. And I think things should be called out. Anyway, my point of this video was that they are telling us something and the UN, with my video on cognitive warfare, is also telling you. You know, this is their subconscious uh, uh, desire to confess, telling you that this is the battlefield. The battlefield is your mind. And so uh, where that is confusing, and I think for me, like I, it, it certainly had me uh, uh, off on the back foot for a while, um, because traditionally, I'm sure that you, like myself, you know, when you think of a, a cognitive warfare or warfare, uh, you know, it's people on the ground uh, running around with uh, sticks from shooting sticks to, you know, pointed sticks, you know, running at each other. And it's a really physical situation. And uh, so that's how we would define the battleground. And this is a new battleground. OK, so basically uh, me sitting here making this video, I'm now 
a combatant in that battle, in that battleground, on that battlefield. Okay, and I'm saying this not because I feel that they are the enemy. It's because they, the UN, watch my video, you'll see, they have declared war on the public. They have made me the enemy. Okay, because they're playing out this mind, this mind game, this cognitive warfare on me and the rest of society around the world. So uh, I was a little overwhelmed, and I'm um, thinking, how 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 do you fight back? How do you how do you grapple with this way of doing things? Um, and especially as it's working so well. And you know, I think firstly we have to realize that this is how the battle is being defined. And the piece that I read, you know, it says in there that the person who acts first defines the battlefield. Well, they've acted first. Okay, this is a response, remember. This is um, a response to how they've acted towards us. And so they've got a spell going. They have spellbound people with cognitive warfare. Uh, they've got everyone into little bubbles. And as I said, those bubbles, uh, when they interact with each other, uh, there's friction. Okay, so how do we do this? We, we break this with truth. We do this like I'm doing with videos like this. Now, I know not all of you can do this. You know, I just happen to be in a situation where I have the time uh, and the interest to do the research. You know, because you have to remember that I am not only watching this as a participant, but I am watching this as a amateur historian, anthropologist, sociologist, um, a studier of people, of civilizations, um, not in any great depth, but certainly as an overview. And I'm watching all of this play out from you know that perspective up here as well as being on the ground boots on the ground you know involved in all of this so the way you break the spell is simply with the power of the truth okay uh, and the truth is that really regardless of what we're hearing about um, inoculations and the outbreak and so on and so forth it is to get you to get an app on your phone and to completely control society so that you are under the bidding you always you will always have that passport with you and that passport will control your comings and goings uh, and so that the whole outbreak actually now we'll we'll still we'll find out i'm not saying that there isn't anything going on you know we just don't know okay that story will be told over time but it's being used right now as a vector Okay, so that is the target of the cognitive warfare, and you can see how they're now escalating. I think that there will be a December, sorry, a November lockdown going into December. Uh, cases are increasing, and so on and so forth. And so we're working up uh, the rhetoric here. So the way we fight this uh, is with the truth, and so this is why I'm bringing you information which I feel is contradictory. It's openly contradictory from their information sources okay so you could use this as ammunition to try and build a case you don't, don't go into all the facts and figures let, let them research the facts and figures if they want to so you know for example one of the things that um, I'll do if I'm in a lineup behind somebody and they're wearing a mask you know and I'll say like aren't you tired of the mask mask wearing yeah yeah nobody likes the mask I can guarantee you so they go, yeah, 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 I'm pretty sick. I say, well, did you, did you get your shot? And they go, well, yeah. I say, well, why are you wearing your mask? Well, you know, you can still get it. I go, so why did you get your shot then? Okay, this is a little, it, it's showing up the contradiction. Now, it may not have an impact then and there, but I'll guarantee you at some point that person will think about that and go, wait, wait a minute, why did I do that? And all you have to do is break that bubble with the truth and the truth will stand on its own the truth will stand on its own and it will only be taken out by a truth that has fought its way tooth and nail to the top of that truth and proved that the previous truth was not the one we should be going by okay but the truth will stand the truth will always come out in the end and it will stand up for itself in the end so that's all we have to do to is stick to the truth but tell it Remember that telling the truth is a part of cognitive warfare or the resistance to cognitive warfare.
okay and this is how we're going to fight back you're going to go you're going to take the information that I'm presenting here you're going to go to people like James Corbett uh, Amazing Polly uh, Cliff High Jason at four um, the Kaiser report with Max and Stacy um, and you are going to use those pieces of information so you've got the easy route all you've got to do is remember this information send them to the video share these videos on other social media platforms and um, so that they can go see for themselves and this do not underestimate the power of doing this you know the one video that I put up uh, it was a re-upload actually of uh, Gina Gold up in Dawson Creek that had nearly 350,000 views and here is a plain speaking educated common sense woman not a conspiracy theorist not a tinfoil wearing nut bar I hope like myself just a regular everyday person I was a barber for goodness sake for 28 years just going where's the common sense here this is what I'm presenting okay so this is how we are going to fight back in the war that they have defined in the battleground of cognitive warfare so anyway I hope this has given you some hope that we can act that we can do things we we don't have to be helpless in this we don't have to stand there gobsmacked and go oh my god what I can what can I do we have the power of social media they said that's what they're going to do they're going to infect our social media. They're going to um, send certain pieces of information or misinformation your way. Or they're going to expose a leader that has the wrong narrative with a piece of uh, information that was hacked out of some diary or something or other. Okay, so um, this is where we are. And this is the battle we are waging. And thank goodness I can do it in my living room. I can take it from the ease of this chair through the camera and social media and uh, if you would please share this video far and wide okay as to how we are going to deal with this situation because it won't take much once you know people are already weary people are already weary of this whole scenario they're already starting to see uh, videos and information coming from the United States in Florida where it's normal I have a friend down in North Carolina. Uh, we go, we talk backwards and forwards all the time in uh, in email, and uh, it's normal down there. No one wears a mask in North Carolina. All the stores are open. There's no restrictions. Are you kidding me? How long can you keep up this ruse where there's nothing out of the ordinary? Cases are just normal. Uh, the cases that they're seeing in Florida, well, they're dropping actually, but they would what you would see in a normal flu season, same as in in North Carolina, and so uh, yes. Yes, just spread the truth. That's all you have to do. Put the armor of truth. And you will also have the moral high ground because you will find, if you followed me over time, I'm more than willing to change my point of view if I'm presented with evidence. Simple as that. And that's, that's how all scientific work should go. We should all be following that kind of that, that kind of uh, idea. We will do something and we'll follow that as long uh, until it's um, proven correct or incorrect and then we'll change. But right now you see they're making up stuff. That's the problem. That is why there is so much censorship. That is why they are frightened. They, you know, these people, like I say, they're so predictable. They think that if you can, they can prevent you from saying the word, they can stop you from thinking the thought. How childish is that? You see, this is how they're so, this is how and why they're so predictable. Because you and I know that the thought is still going on. You may, you may try and change the speech. And it's more dangerous, you will find in the long run, to do that. It's better to have the speech uh, out there and uh, you can see where it is rather than try and, uh, uh, you know, censor the language. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe below, share, share widely. And in the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant afternoon and we'll talk very, very shortly. You take care now. See ya. Bye.